Good, my name is Michelle Hodge. I'm the Executive Director of Enrollment Management, and I am happy to be your MC today to tell you a little bit about something called CUNY First. CUNY First is a replacement for your beloved SIMS or eSIMS, depending on how you interface with the student information system. Some of you in the room may know a little bit about CUNY First because you transferred from a school that had CUNY First. Some of you probably, this is the first time you're hearing about CUNY First. No matter what your level of knowledge of CUNY First, after today, hopefully you will be able to take some of this information and get ready for CUNY First. But it sounds like you're ready, right? Your college? Ready for CUNY First. Yeah, it sounds like you're already ready. That's good. So I, I put a heart on this because of the day. How many people are excited about Valentine's Day? Raise your hands. <laughs> how, many, how many people are scared to death? <laughs> well, I was, I was promised that I would get some love today, so thank you for having me. I'm, my name's John Ray. I'm the head of communications for the entire project. And for those of you who, uh, who are paying attention, um, York will be one of five, one of six colleges that are going to add CUNY First to its repertoire. Um, what do we know about CUNY First? Um, how many people have come from a college that have used CUNY First? So, Queensboro, were you at Queensboro? You're at Queens College. So we've, we've brought the system up, and so in, in uh, I want to see if I can make this work. Can we read that? So what I want to do is kind of give you an idea of what's happening now, talk a little bit about what our calendar is. I see the top is coming, so we're going to have CUNY First is coming kind of folded over. So, um, so one of the things that's happening now is people in their offices, bursars, admissions, registrar's office, financial aid, IT, are attending a bunch of testing sessions. They're basically kicking the tires of CUNY First to make sure that it's going to work for York, it's going to make work for the people in the offices, and certainly how it's going to work for the students. We're about to start training. Um, who is our head of training? Who's our training liaison here? She's, a, she's training. So in, in just a few days, training is going to start for the folks in these offices. We call it the BARFIT offices, Bursar, Admissions, Registrar, Financial Aid, and Technology. They're going to start training so that when it's time for you to need them, they know how to use the system. What we do is we put them in a simulated environment with York information, York classes, York students, York finances, so that they'll know what to do when it's time to launch the system. You have this wonderful student team that's been um, forming for the last month that, um, I, honestly, I want to say, let's give them a, another round of applause. <laughs> Students, they will be your conduit to learning the system. Now, most of you have spent hours and hours understanding and knowing technologies. For some of you, it's going to be a breeze. But for some of you, you might need some help. So they will be around. You will see them in their shirts. You will see them around campus and call on them. They're more than happy to help you, and especially during the registration process. Because what will happen is the college will give you a notification that the system is ready for you. You will go in and what we call claim your account. You will go find yourself in the system, and then they will let you know when registration is going to start, when it's your time to register, and then when, uh, when it's going to be time for everybody to get ready to, to move on. So, uh, go back again. So, I wanted to let you know about some of the challenges we've faced um, when we've launched CUNY First. Um, did I do the wrong one again? Oh, did I do it? No, actually, I'm on the wrong slide again. Can, Professor, can you run this for me, please? <laughs> what are the, where are the challenges we faced right there? Go back one. Nope, one more. It's going forward, isn't it? Keep going. <laughs> We, we, we practice this. You could tell we practice this. There we go. There we go. So in terms of, you know, since we've launched and we've been, we're at nine colleges now, 
some of the challenges that we've faced is, like any system, people forget their passwords. You'll come in and there'll be a system of how you're supposed to lay out your password. So we know folks are going to forget them. But unlike other systems where you have to call the help desk, you don't have to do that. It's all self-help. And it's all there when you sign in if you need to either change your password or to help you forget it. The way that you're going to claim your account and, and find yourself in the system, you're going to answer some security questions like you would when you're, when you're uh, signing in with your bank or with, uh, with uh, your cable company. And that, those kind of things, the team will tell you as you're doing that to save that information so that when you come back, if you forget your password, you can do it. What we use for CUNY First for the students, if you're going to register for classes, we use a shopping cart concept, much like Amazon or any type of store. You find the classes you want, you create your calendar, and you put them in a shopping cart. When it's time for you to register, you take them out of your shopping cart, confirm you want them, and you build your, your, your class schedule. We found that it's at several schools, students have thought that if they put it in the shopping cart, that they're in the class. So it's one of those things where it's like if you buy something, you have to confirm it, you have to give more information, just take it to the end of the process and you'll be in. The other thing is, everything is in real time. So my son was a student at Hunter, and when he would register for classes, he never knew if the next day he would have those classes. You'll see an indicator when you're looking and registering for classes. If it's green and it says you're in, you're in. And the only way that, that anything might change is if you're taking a 400 level class and the professors need to get the seniors into those classes. But it's a rare, rare occasion. Everything is in real time. Um, for faculty and chairs, one of the things that we found out is we need to keep adjuncts, graduate assistant, teaching assistants into the system a little longer. Mo most of the time, the HR department will take them out, but we need to keep these adjuncts in through, for anybody who's teaching, honestly, to make sure that the grading is complete because especially if with larger classes we found that the graduate assistants were were actually doing the grading or finishing the grading and and they couldn't get back in the system so we we've, we've learned that and are keeping the uh, those folks on later um, you're going to hear from the student marketing team you're going to hear from everybody that your york email address is primary you you can still use your gmails and your your yahoos for other things but the system will notify you only through your campus email. And at Queens College, I think one of the things they did when they came out with the registration calendar, they sent it only to the Queens College email address, so it would, it would prompt the students to keep using it. I don't know how much you want to keep looking in, but it's important to keep your, your, uh, your local um, York College email account active so that you're always in touch. Um, once we launch, everybody's going to want to know where to go from help. So for help, and that will be really clear on the, on the college website. It will also be clear in the offices. Students, again, you have your peers. In the offices, we have trainers. We call them super users who are going to be available to help folks. Um, the help desk is obviously going to be available. And if we get something really big, if the system is really a problem, then it will come back to my colleagues at CUNY, and then we'll work it together to make sure it's no longer a problem. There's one other thing that, that we really want to share with you now so you'll understand it. Students will have a bigger view of everything than they've ever had before. So the one area that its students have really told us that is hard to understand is their bill. So why don't we go to the next slide. When you, when you sign into the system, you will have a finance section. So in the finance section, you will have things like, what is it you owe? And in, in, the, um, in the system, it'll have all of the detail that you need. It'll have what are your charges, what do you owe now, what is due later. Go ahead to the next slide. You'll have detail about your activity fees and other fees. So you'll get a real good detail of all of the things that you're paying for and the money you've spent. Go ahead, next one. All right, so CUNY First isn't just coming now and it's brand new. For anybody who's working in our business office, CUNY First has been our, our, uh, our business of record since 2008. Um, human resources, all of the folks who work here, they've been working in CUNY First. Um, I know that a lot of people who are claiming their counts now are finally seeing for the first time their, um, their employee history, their, their personnel file for their employment. Um, the other thing that's great about CUNY First is that since we've launched it, 
especially with the personnel system, nobody is identified anymore with a social security number. The only reason the college or the university needs your social security number is to pay you or to do your financial aid. But you will learn as you go and claim your account that you will be identified, and it's usually first name, dot, last name, with a couple of numbers, or what we call the MPL ID, the CUNY ID, which will be a string of numbers. I know from history that for folks who we need to talk to the bursar's office or financial aid or the registrar's office or admissions, they will really appreciate it if you come to their office knowing your MPL ID. It really helps them so they can access your record quickly and, and be able to help you as fast as possible. What do we got next? All right, so we're not just launching the student system. Um, right away, we're going to be um, putting more burden on your business office. We're going to be launching a system for all of the senior colleges, for all purchasing, everything the college buys, and all the, all the uh, checks the college writes. That's going to launch in July. And then for our project, eSIMS, we're going to let the, the college leadership know that it's what we call lights out that eSIMS will no longer be available. It won't be available to you. It will only be available to folks in the offices for what we call inquiry, if they need to know something about your record. In the time frame between eSIMS dropping and CUNY first starting, they're gonna keep records. So if you come in and you pay a bill after this blackout period, they're gonna keep record. And then once we've launched, they're gonna spend the first week or so taking all the transactions, all the applications that they've done that they would normally do in eSIMS and then they'll put it in CUNY first when we launch. So our guess is this is gonna be about the last week or so in March and right around spring break, and then it will launch and then the college, again, look to your email, look to the, the college website about when it's time for you to claim your account and then to start using the system. Um, we're excited, this is, this is, we had a rough start at Queens College, but we learned a lot from them and, and at Queensboro. We launched five colleges last year and it went really well so we're equally excited because we've had a little time. We've had about three years now since we've used the system. So I know you might have some questions of me, but I think the next part of the program is questions for the panel. So thank you for having me. Have fun tonight on Valentine's Day. And what about your college? Ready for CUNY First. Try it again. Your college? Ready for CUNY First. Thank you again for having me. Okay, so we wanted this to be uh, pretty interactive and have uh, opportunity for you to get your questions answered uh, going into CUNY first. I want to tell you a little story that um, I tell everybody about getting the word out about something. And it's called the tipping point. Maybe some of you read it. It's dependent on people who are called mavens. And mavens are people who know a lot about stuff and they don't mind sharing that information. You have a panel of mavens right here, right? What I need you guys to be are connectors. Connectors' jobs are to tell people what they heard from the mavens, all right? Do you think you can do that? Do you think you can do that? Oh my gosh. Do you think you can do that? Oh, thank you. Very good. All right, so first question of the day. How will the college communicate with you via CUNY First? If you could raise your hand, we'll send the mic to you. Yep. Okay. And um, could I get the marketing team over here, please? <laughs> Through your college email, exactly. Give her a round of applause. And get her a t-shirt, please. Okay, so I'm going to let the Mavens tell you a little bit about why CUNY First is important for their area, and then we'll open the floor up for questions. Hi everybody, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so I was introduced before, just in case there's some people who came in who um, 
didn't hear, my name is Laura Bruno. I work in the admissions office. And just briefly, um, for us in admissions, CUNY First is really exciting because it represents the first time that admissions actually will have an admission system. Now that may sound strange to you and I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of details except to say that in our legacy system, basically all students who were admitted were put right into the record system. And then we did a whole bunch of things which you guys know as stops to prevent you from moving forward. And in CUNY First, we will put all of our admitted uh, students in an application system, a true admission system. Um, so there will still be things you need to do um, for the new students that come in, um, and we will still require sort of via a checklist um, those steps to be completed, but once we put you inside the school system, the record system, you're ready to go. You're ready to shop, as John Ray said, and put your courses in your shopping cart. So that's briefly what's exciting for us in admissions. Um, for most of you, you're not going to really have any contact with the admissions module anymore or the admissions office, but for the new students coming in, it's going to be a market improvement over what we've had before. But feel free to ask any questions when the time is um, right for that, and good luck with everything. How you doing, everyone? Uh, I'm Greg Baker from Information Technology, and um, <clears throat> this system represents a major change or a shift in how we support systems. When I came to the college six years ago, there was a lot of catching up to learning some of the systems for support for the students. And what happens when you're trying to catch up to systems and you're trying to troubleshoot problems, it's, it's, you know, uh, it's not as perfect as it could be. This is the one system that I can say that there's so much information and so many help uh, data and content on it that we will be able to support you and answer most of your questions. A lot of information is on our website. A lot of information is gonna be with our support team in IT. They're being trained extensively on how to support students, faculty, and staff across the entire campus. But we don't wanna take any chances. So one of the things that we are doing along with the support of the marketing team is we are recruiting a student first marketing extension to our help desk. If you go to our website on the York site, you'll see there's gonna be a link there for how you can participate in that. What we're trying to do is get students who have already been through this, who have experience, and other schools that have gone before us to help our students. And what we're doing is on the third floor in the 3H corridor, we're setting up a, a temporary student support help desk there. We're gonna have kiosks, we're gonna have computers, we're gonna have all kinds of Q&A uh, facilitated via the web and via documents. So that's gonna be a place that we're going to probably initiate the student experience for CUNY first. There's gonna be a lot of questions, I'm sure, and the way you can get your answers is through paying attention to the documentation that we're gonna be handing out, and it's gonna be on the website, but also, uh, we're gonna make uh, I don't want to make any promises, but we're going to make a major effort to have more of these events so that you're familiar with as much as possible of what you need in order to claim your accounts and in order to be able to navigate the information that you're going to be presented with. Uh, just two things I want to leave you with is one, if you don't know the service desk extension to get support, it's 5311. It used to be 5300, but it's now 5311. There's another way that you can get support from our service desk is that you can fill out a self-service ticket via Y Connect. And what a lot of you may not know is that if you type the word yes on any browser on campus, you will be immediately taken to our Y Connect portal where you can fill out a self-service ticket for any question that you have, whether it's CUNY first or whether it's other techn technology needs that you may have. Hey everybody, Johnny Diaz from the Office of the Registrar. Um, CUNY First is important because uh, it should make the registration process a lot easier. You should be able to see the course availability in real time, real time now so you can see what's open and what's not open. Um, another, another cool thing about CUNY First is that multiple offices can view your record at once so you won't have to go to one office to tell them to take you down so that you can uh, go in there and register for another office to be able to access it. 
And uh, those are a few things so far that are good about CUNY First. Thank you. Next, we have Martha from the Bursar's office. Hello, everybody. Um, as we know, we entered a new era, and it's going to be wonderful for everybody. And of course, like everybody has been saying, the new technology is bringing you to a new era, and that's very important because a lot of things that you went through many different steps before is going to be much easier now. And even to make the payment is going to be wonderful because it's going to be more visible, more information that before you didn't have in the system to provide it to you guys, then it was going to be updated now. And it's going to be very accurate, very informative, and the payment should be much easier, including with the financial aid also. Then, you know, when you come and make the payment, then you know the status of the balance that you will have. And that's it for us. Thank you. No, we're going to do the questions. The gentleman I'm going to bring up now, when it's time for questions and answers, he knows lots of the answers. <laughs> His name is Thomas Jordan. Come on up. Those are obviously some of my kids doing that. <laughs> so I'm the director of the C program. Um, one of the great benefits that you're going to find behind doing Trinity First it's one of those things like when you tell people what you're learning the piano, the one thing is piano is easy to learn but hard to master. This is going to kind of work in the reverse. That initially you're so used to using eSIMs that that's what you're conditioned to do. But once you get CUNY First down, you're going to find that it's a lot easier. And the good thing is that it will empower you with the knowledge and information that you need to know. For example, students come into my office and say, oh my goodness, Dr. Jordan, I got to stop. What's that stop about? Well. You're not going to have to ask that question because stops are not going to be called indicators and you are going to know exactly why that indicator is on your record that's preventing you from doing something. You will not need that. So now you just need to go to the person that has placed the indicator on your account and you get that person to remove it by meeting the, the, the agreement of whatever it is that you need to do. So for example, if it's for health services, you will be able to go there and it will tell you that your meningitis shot is not in compliance you will be able to do that. You will not have a question as to why that's there. The other good thing is that if you are part of a certain group, okay, so if you're part of C, if you're an athlete, if you're part of any particular identified group, that indicator will also be there that will show whether or not what you are part of. Everyone on campus is going to know this. Therefore, there will be no ambiguity about what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So that if you are a C student, they're going to know that you should be going to the C office. If you're an athlete, we're going to know that you should be going to the athletic department to get advising on certain things. So the good thing about this is that you're going to be empowered. The information that you need to know is going to be visible. You'll be able to see certain things about your financial aid status and all of that thing. So all of this is going to be coming up to you. So the good thing about CUNY First is that you will now be empowered to do the things that you need to do. Okay? That's it. Thank you very much. The next person taught me a very good analogy. I don't know if she's going to share it with you. She is, okay, I'm going to let her share it with you. Kathy. Okay, this is the shortened version. CUNY First is like the campus, all of you, the, the teachers, the professors, the students, the office staff, we're all moving to another planet. Okay, so when lights go out on Sims, we're packing our stuff up, you know, we're not there yet, and then we're going to move to this other planet. A couple of tricks to this. Financial aid, we don't have our new uh, high-tech building on CUNY First. For the first year, we're moving our log cabin, and we're going to be living on this new planet, but in our log cabin. Things aren't going to quite fit right. The financial aid system is not coming up on CUNY First for the first year. We'll come up on the second year, which means we have to interface with your registration, whether you drop classes. It's going to be a little awkward. With that said, I'm, I'm a planner. And my advice to students always is to do things early. 
if you if if you ever listen to me, this is the year to do it. You've got <laughs> you've got budget issues going on, you've got computer issues going on, and we can't do the magic tricks or the little band aids we've been able to do on campus in the past. How many of you have filed your FAFSA for summer fall? That's got to be more. Okay, good. That's good. I need you to file your FAFSA by April 1st. I need you to make sure all your documentation is done by May 1st because we're going to have problems. Talk to some of the people that came up on CUNY first in other schools. When you're taking a log cabin and you're trying to talk to a space station, you're going to have some issues. So if you want your financial aid to hit your bill so your registration is good and your classes don't drop, I, I need you to kind of work with me and get as much done as early as possible. Um, with that said, you are going to see vast improvements in your access to data. It's much less cryptic. The systems we're working on now are out of the 80s and you can't get the information you need. You're going to like this system. Um, but there are going to be problems. I'm not going to pretend there aren't. And we can't fix things by just tricking the system anymore. Okay? It, it's, it's controlled centrally. It's like if you go on a website and you try and shop for something, can you just get an answer and somebody to fix things right away? It's more complicated than that. And as much as we want to just make it better for you, it's going to take a little time. Okay? So please get your FAFSAs done. Get your documentation completed as early as possible so that we can push it through the system. Thank you. Hi, a lot of you know me. I'm Bruni Abdullah, the Director of Scholarship Center. Um, unlike the offices here, the Scholarship Center is not really actually a part of CUNY First yet, but I am what um, Mr. Ray called a super user. Okay? I'm one of the persons who will know I already trained for um, students, to work with students. I'll be training for faculty and staff. So there'll be several of us who'll be able to help the students, faculty, and staff with the whole process and doing certain things. Okay, so there'll be some of us who'll be working with um, Great Vega at the Help Center and a lot of other things to show everyone in the campus and I'm working with the marketing team to get the word out that and let everyone know, Ethan will be God. It's like, you know, the way you come to work, you always come the same way, right? Now guess what, that way is gone. Now you're gonna have to find another way to go, and it may have detours, it may have all kinds of other ways, it may be easier. But you're gonna have to get used to it and try and find the right way to do it, okay? All right, thank you. All right, so we're going to open it up for questions. Um, what I want you to do first, though, is on the back of that sheet that had everybody's names, if you look at the back, there is a student readiness checklist. Your college? Ready for CUNY All right, well, this sheet is going to help you be ready for CUNY First. So make sure that you hang on to this. I believe it's going to be available on the web as well. Um, Linda, is it available on the web? Yes, it will. Anybody who doesn't have this should raise their hand. If you need one, we are handing them out. Certainly, if you hold on to these or if you know where to get one when it comes time for registration, this will help you. And just in case, some of you, even though it seems like you all are really into it, don't think this is really coming. You registered in SIMS or eSIMS, right? When you want to go see your grades, they'll be in CUNY first. So it is coming this semester. All right, so do we have any questions? Question up front. Stan, and we're going to bring a mic to you so everybody can hear. problem in terms of financial aid. I know that you said that it's going to be a little bit more different here, but how are they going to resolve the problem?
problem in time so that it doesn't affect other students here. And the problem was that even though I had my financial aid all in time and all the paperwork documented and everything, it would still show that I would owe a balance up to this date, even if I'm not registered at that school and it's still showing that I have a, that I owe money and in fact I really don't. But for some reason they haven't been able to clear that. Yeah. Yeah. The, first, first of all, the question has to do with um, financial aid being processed and awarded, and it didn't apply to her bill, which technically isn't my side of the fence, but I'm going to answer it anyway. <laughs> you know? um, because what happens with financial aid is the financial aid office gets the information from the federal and state government who process the application according to all the regulations, um, and then we award what what money you are eligible for. That's pretty much our part. But I think it's because we're nice, although we end up getting blamed for all the, the problems. Um, people come to us with questions when it doesn't pay their bill. That's not really our part of the picture. Our part of the picture is getting you awarded. Paying the bill gets on the student account side, the bursar side. But we work together well in this school. What happened at Queensboro and at Queens, those were the first year CUNY first schools. And the interface that took it, in my analogy, from the log cabin to the bill to this space station didn't work. So the, the financial aid awards were leaving the log cabin, but they never got to the space station. That's been two years ago. They have worked on that interface, number one. Number two, we in this college work very closely with our student financial side and I don't foresee that being a problem. What, they, what they've done is in CUNY First also added uh, a feature that's a do not cancel um, so that we can put, I don't know if any of you, we put estimated aid now when it's like not your fault, it's a system issue that we're trying to, to deal with. There's now a do not cancel. That means they will not cancel your classes if there's this issue. Thank you. I have a question right up here. Are y'all going to be taking visa now? Because in order to reduce the line for the bursar, y'all don't take y'all do not accept visa. And a lot of a lot of the students pay their bills or their debit cards or credit cards are visa. So the line for the birth start will get extremely long because they're waiting for, they're waiting to pay their bill. So will y'all be accepting visa? Y'all shut up. I don't per se, is something that is CUNY-wise. It's not just your college way. And being that is CUNY involved with this decision for us not to accept visa, and that's the reason why we inform the student that CUNY does not accept visa. It's not your college not accepting visa. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. I do, I have heard through the grapevine though, at some point in time, CUNY We'll be talking with Visa again to try to see if they can work that out because that is something that both the college and the university have heard from the students as an issue, that they would like to be able to take Visa. But they are going to charge you because you can't, <laughs> you can't get around the charges uh, that Visa imposes when you do a transaction over their system. But CUNY is going to try to do the best they can to negotiate with Visa so that it's the best uh, deal we can get for the students. Okay, I have a question that a lot of students ask me in this general. Does Blackboard affect um, CUNY First or will CUNY First affect Blackboard? Um, yeah. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. A lot of students ask. I'm out of here. Yeah. It, it's two different systems. It's two different systems. Is this even working? There you go. Two different systems, they'll still work inter 
Um, the only connection really with Blackboard is if, an, if a, a new professor comes on, a new, new uh, adjunct professor comes on, we need to make sure they're in the system, have a local email address so they can post classes, they can put the, um, um, uh, all of the information, the books, the readings, all of the things in it. But they're two different systems and it, you know, it's usually at the behest of the professor which he or she wants to communicate better with the student, whether it's the uh, email system, the, the blast that they could send through CUNY First, through their class list, or whether or not they want to do everything through Blackboard. Is, the Black, is Blackboard going to be available on CUNY First, or is, the, is that going to be a separate website? It's a separate website. It's a separate it, website. Yeah, I, I think mostly you go through the CUNY portal or through, exactly. yeah. yeah. It's two different, there's a, going to be a CUNY First website and then the CUNY portal for all the other things you need. No, okay. yeah, just these sims. So just to reiterate, CUNY First is an independent system from Blackboard, and your CUNY portal does not go away. The things you access, the CUNY email, um, what else is on the portal? Uh, Blackboard, um, all that will work. Okay, does anybody on the panel have any parting words for the students? No? Okay, so everybody you see here today, including the students, are available to help you. Oh, there's one more question. Hold on. Let's get that question. Hi. Um, I was able, the system allowed me to register for the That's correct. Um, the CUNY First system is not live for your college yet. So it won't allow you to do any of the uh, transactions that you'd like to do um, for next uh, semester. We will announce when it's available for the students. There are modules that are up for CUNY First that are live for some of the faculty and staff currently, but none of the parts that are for the students are live right now. Oh, wait a minute. We have one question from somebody. Yes, you can do what we call claim your account. All faculty and staff should be claiming their accounts right now. Uh, students, I think we will send an announcement to tell you when we're ready for you. Yes. Okay, so CUNY First is kind of particular about some of the data when you enter it. Um, one thing is when you're doing your date, you're going to want to put the slash between the month, the day, and the year uh, when you enter that into uh, CUNY First. That has been an issue for people in the past. Uh, but just as Ms. Kwan told you, that little trick, those are the things that you're going to have to rely on each other sometimes uh, to know how to do things in CUNY First. And you guys being the first ones being exposed to the system, I'm sure a lot of people will be asking you those type of questions. Please be helpful to your fellow Cardinals. Anybody want to volunteer to be part of the student team? We are definitely taking more uh, volunteers. They are having fun so far, but they do need more people to join in the fun. So that is also...